Hey everyone, let's talk Tyvek. Now you may think of Tyvek as this, or possibly this, but I am going to be using it to hopefully make this. The best way I can describe Tyvek is that it's a mixture between paper and fabric. After designing this dress with the help of AI, I showed it to my eight-year-old daughter and she loved it, asked if I can make it for her, and I said, well, I will try. <laughs> Uh, the biggest concern was how in the world am I going to make this skirt and all these petals? I am a part of a costume networking group on Facebook, so I posed the question to them. They had a lot of great information, tips, help. The most unique one was Tyvek. And at the time, the only thing I knew about Tyvek is that some envelopes are made of it. So I did what anybody else would do. I went to Google and YouTube University and found out almost nothing about garment making with Tyvek and decided I would test it out myself. I had a leftover Tyvek mailer and a couple other mailers, cut them up and ran some tests and here are the results. Tyvek is a 100% synthetic material. It's made from high density polyethylene fibers. And even though it may resemble paper, it's actually plastic. I created a pattern piece of a petal just to test out what I wanted to do with this. And here I am just tracing the petals I wasn't sure if Tyvek could be ironed, so I set my iron on my lowest setting, which is nylon. It did a really good job, but that petal wasn't too crinkled. So I decided to crinkle up a piece of paper and see how well the lowest setting did for this. After I show you how well it did, I actually did press it one more time and it did a pretty good job at getting those wrinkles out. You can still kind of see it, but Tyvek almost looks like it has a lot of wrinkles anyway. The next big question is whether or not you can sew Tyvek. And the simple answer is yes, you can. I did not use a special needle or thread. I just threw it under my machine and went for it. And it turned out a pretty clean stitch. Then I tried to see how strong it was and Tyvek is really strong. I stitched a second line and tried to rip it. I don't think anybody's gonna do this to their dress, but I just had to see how much it can withstand. These are the paints that I currently have, so I'm gonna test these out to see if they work on the Tyvek. It's the Jacquard brand. I'm not gonna be using this kind, but I am going to be using the Jacquard Dynaflow, which makes it just look more like watercolor. I'm not quite sure it's going to work on the petals, only because the petals are more paper than fabric, so I'm not sure how it's, how it's going to work, but we're going to try it out together. I'm really shocked that this worked as well as it did. The Dynaflow is a really good product. The Jacquard brand is great. I just didn't think the paper would pick it up as well as it did, but it looks great. It blended well and it dried very quickly. I have used this Dynaflow on another project shown here, but I'm, I highly recommend this brand and using it for a project like this. I'm honestly shocked at how well this turned out and how easy it was, which is why I didn't record it. But I'm gonna show you how I did it. But basically all I did, now these are my test leaves for the dress. All I did was glue in a piece of wire into the center and just used good old 
Elmer's glue, glue stick, and glued around the edges and just pressed it all together. And now I have a leaf that I can adjust and it stays very well. And the best part of Tyvek, of course, is no fraying. I don't have to deal with anything on the edges. It's just ready to go. And I left a little bit of a space up here. I think my, it kind of moved, but that's the top of my wire. So I left space at the top so that I can stitch it to the skirt, but this turned out really good and it's super easy. So let me show you how we do it. This is the wire that I used. Unfortunately, I do not know the gauge, but it is pretty thin. So all you do is you cut your wire to the length that you want, and I'm trying to get as close to the bottom and about a quarter inch from the top. And we're simply, I'm gonna get glue on my table, but that's all right. Put glue around the edges. And I do a strip down the middle, and then maybe just a little bit there. Place my wire, and it doesn't have to be exact, but you kind of want it to get on the glue a little bit. Okay. Take your other piece. and lay it on top. And then it automatically makes like a little spine down the middle. And then you just let it sit and let it dry. And then once it's dry, I will trim up sort of the edges where they over didn't overlap properly and you have space to cut and that wire is sealed in there. It's so easy. I, I can't even believe it. It kind of kills me a little bit just to <laughs> not be using like high quality fabrics and silks and whatever, but I mean, that stuff's expensive. So Tyvek it is. So these were just my test Tyvex from old mailers and stuff like that. You can buy it by the roll. I did find some at Home Depot that doesn't have any writing on it. A lot of it will have Tyvek written really big, like the logo on the paper, but you can get plain Tyvek. It looks like from Home Depot. Lowe's has their logo on it. And I also found some, some excuse me, on Uline, just U-L-I-N-E dot com. They sell it as well. I haven't purchased a roll yet because I wanted to test all this stuff out, but I'm definitely going to go this route, I think. It's the cheapest possible way. I hope you learned a few things from this video. It was definitely a learning experience for me. And I am going to continue forward with making this dress. I did discover that Home Depot's um, Tyvek does have a logo on it, so I cannot get it from there. Uline's Tyvek does not. I did order a sample from them. I want to make sure it's the same thickness and works the same with the um, paints that I used. So I'm going to test that out before I move forward. But please stick around if you want to see how I make this dress. I'll share as much of it with you as possible. Thanks for watching. Bye.